So before we open up this video to the main point here, just want to give you guys a little FYI. We both just woke up from a nap, and I don't know if you're feeling out of it, but I drank pre-workout to get myself into it, so there might be a viewer discretion advisory warning for those of you guys that can't handle some intensity based off of pre-workout. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a video that you guessed it addresses YouTube issues, and I get it. This has been a thing countless times. Same shit, different pile. We all are in agreement with that. But it does not take away from the fact that things like this still do need to be called out. So with that being said, let's just get into the video. Alright, so the first topic of the video comes in the form of a Dexerto article that is titled, Corey X Kenshin slams YouTube after being hit with channel strike with no reason. After spending time contemplating his retirement from the platform, YouTuber Corey X Kenshin, or as I will be referring to him from now on in this video as Corey for short, was hit with a channel strike the day after he announced his plans for the future and he's angry. While dealing with issues within his family and friends, Corey has had to occasionally take some time away from his YouTube channel with 10 million followers. Back when his channel hit 7 million followers, the YouTuber had made a mistake of announcing that he will retire when his channel hit 10 million. However, when that time came, he decided to upload a video announcing that he is, in fact, not retiring and that he wants to continue being a positive influence. Unfortunately, the day after his 10 million announcement video, Corey was hit with a community guideline violation for child safety and the lack of communication behind it had him rather angry at the platform. All these years, all this time I've put into your platform, I thought it would be worth a little bit of your respect. Started the video uploaded to his channel on September 2nd. He received a channel strike a day after his latest video. He said, YouTube will not tell me why. He said that YouTube removed the offending video from his channel and went on to explain that he doesn't understand why the platform would go back to find a video over two years old. And this right here is an image showcasing exactly that. We have ourselves the video, Try Not To Laugh Challenge number 8, and the policy that it apparently violated was child safety. Actions appeal rejected. Yikes. This channel is a child to me. It's like a baby to me. I've been working on this channel for over 10 years, the YouTuber stated before going on to explain he has been told that if he were to get two more strikes, his channel would be removed. After Corey decided not to look for an answer on other platforms, he went back to his manager who approached him with what he believed to be the reasoning behind the strike. After talking to his manager, Corey explained that he understood why the part in question may have been flagged. However, he quoted a video from Markiplier who had similar issues in the past. Markiplier went on to explain a point that Corey agreed with. If a channel is in good standing, why not allow us to self-moderate? He went on to showcase a feature that YouTube has built in that allows creators to edit out parts of a video without having to re-upload the video. If I broke the rules, I broke the rules. Communicate, YouTube. Communicate before you hand out strikes, he said, before summing up his thoughts. You're just a number to them. It's unknown whether or not Corey will continue uploading as planned due to the strike, but maybe his reach of over 10 million subscribers will help get his video into the eyes of YouTube employees that can listen to his concerns. Okay, so as for the Corey situation here, it does not surprise me. However, it does not take away from the amount of frustration that I am feeling for this cat. I don't know how you feel. I bet you feel real frustrated about this too. Yeah, I feel really bad for him. Yeah. Fucking 10 million sub channel. Like, here's, here's the crazy thing, all right? Corey is someone with 10 million subscribers. You would think that a channel that size would have, like, a, a you know, a somewhat decent line of contact with YouTube directly. But as it turns out, even with someone with 10 million subscribers, 
uh, falls to victim when it comes to YouTube and their bullshit communication, or I should say, lack of communication. Let's keep it 150% here. And here's the thing as well, is that he brought up something that I am like, holy shit, like, why isn't this actually a thing? If a channel is deemed to be in good standings, why are we not allowed to self-moderate? And here's the thing as well, is that, yeah, we have the ability to edit videos, all right? Say if you post a video from, I don't know, 2016, and it's 2021, okay? I get it, times change, policy changes, yada, 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 all that good stuff. All right, cool. Give us a time frame, okay? Give us, say, for example, seven days. Like, if you bring to our attention that there's an issue with said video, and you give us a timestamp to trim out and deal with, Give us that ability to self-moderate and give us a time limit, seven days. If we do not meet the seven days warning, the seven days grace period, then okay, by all means, give us the punishment if we fucked up. But here's the thing, is that we really should have the ability to self-moderate because here's the thing, we ain't, we ain't preschoolers. Last I checked, I'm fucking 30, going on 31 here in a few weeks, and... You know, uh, there's many YouTubers here that have the ability to run YouTube channels. And, you know, as an example with Corey, someone who ha is a 10 million size subscriber channel and has been doing this for like a decade, you would think that he would be able to have the capability to manage his channel, which he does. But it seems like that YouTube is just way too afraid to give us YouTubers a little bit of control here. I mean, it's bad enough with some of the auto-moderation that YouTube has when it comes to YouTube comments. Like, let us be in charge of our own fucking comments, right? Um, and as for the situation with Corey, I really truly hope that uh, it does get resolved, but... This right here is just a, another fine, or I should say, shit example of like how YouTube screws over their own creators. Like, if this can happen to someone that is at 10 million subscribers, 10 million, think about the amount of shit that YouTubers smaller than that go through. 1 million subscribers, 100,000, 10,000. Our size, you know, like under 10,000, you know, 1,000, things like that. It just, there's, there's no, there's no way that us YouTubers can feel safe, like not even close. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, on the note of YouTubers not feeling safe, I also want to address this as well, because the quartering, as some of you guys might know who he is, I've referenced him quite a bit here on the channel. Um, he's also going through his own bullshit when it comes to issues with YouTube. One of his videos got taken down, and for those guys that don't know, uh, the quartering made a few videos covering the situation revolved around Sophie. A very, very sad and sensitive situation. The quartering made various amounts of videos covering that situation, bringing to light that situation, and that situation did have a good resolution at the end, so, you know, good job for that. But here's the thing, he is being targeted. The quartering had a video being taken down that had to do with covering that subject, and because of that, he had to actually privatize the rest of his videos that had to do with that subject as well. So it's really interesting how the quartering had that specific video being taken down, and he had to privatize the rest of his videos that revolved around said subject. And here's the funny thing, alright? I'm not going to get into all of the details because the quartering made a video on this subject, so feel free to check it out, links down below. But it just is another example of how screwy YouTube is and how us content creators are truly at a disadvantage. You know what I'm saying? And in the case of the quartering, he actually couldn't even appeal that bullshit situation. So try to wrap your head around that one, folks. But that's enough out of my crazy ass. How about you? Do you have anything you guys say? YouTube is just ridiculous. Like, these poor people are just doing their job and making good content, and mm -hmm. YouTube's just being stupid. Yep. And here's the thing, you know, like I said, if 
there is anything that is, you know, not appropriate in today's standards, notify us. Give us the chance to self-moderate rather than just going, you know, from left field and punishing us by taking down a video, saying what we violated, but not give us any clear direction as to what it is we violated. Because here's the thing. We don't know what we did wrong unless you tell us. You tell us if we fuck up and you give us the details and, you know, leave it up to us to uh, to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? L like, leave us to our devices and let us handle it the way we're going to handle it, you know? I really don't think it's that hard, right? But... You know what? Welcome to YouTube 2021, ladies and gentlemen. And again, this right here is another chapter slated in the anime known as YouTube and their countless fuck-ups. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, not really sure what else I can say. The two situations that I had touched base on seem to be pretty cut and dry. And again, it seems like that this is the situation of same shit, different pile, and it is another rerun when it comes to calling out YouTube issues. However, again, I need to preface that it doesn't take away from the fact that things like these do need to be called out. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time as well. Have yourself a damn good one, and we'll see you guys in the next video.